Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the esteemed FaceTime with Leaders and Initiative by World Development Corporation. My name is Tanay All, and I'm an anchor at World Development Corporation. FaceTime with Leaders is a platform for industry veterans to come together to share their knowledge, ideas, thoughts, and best practices with one another, as well as with upcoming industry leaders. In a nutshell, we attempt to encapsulate the multi-decadal learnings of all our industry stalwarts. We hope that by conducting these FaceTime with Leader interviews, we can bring together a global community of imminent personalities. By bringing together such visionaries on one platform, we truly hope to play a part in inspiring the lives of other leaders. Great learnings from great leaders undoubtedly assist everyone, right? They help us to identify, nurture, and work on trade secrets that have already proven a successful formula for so many. And this is what we aim for with these sessions by making them a gathering of industry stalwarts and a knowledge sharing community. We have one such industry giant on FaceTime with leaders with us today, Mr. Makbul Hussain Mohammed. We welcome you on the show, sir. Thank you, Tanai. It's a pleasure being here with you on World Directors Council's uh, introduction session. It's a pleasure, he, indeed. Pleasure is all ours, sir. He is a senior professional with a remarkable career spanning over two and a half decades, marked by a meticulous eye for detail, a unique aptitude for adaptation and learning and cross-functional expertise. His journey from a sales and applications engineer to a business unit head with proficiency in key areas such as sales management, business development, negotiation, team management, inventory management, direct selling and marketing has been a testament to his skills and commitment. <clears throat> His extensive experience includes a pivotal role as the country manager for sales at Service Technologies established in Saudi Arabia and Bahrain, where he has not only identified customer needs, but also conceptualized solutions and managed projects from inception to financial closure. Currently serving as the business unit head for Ocean World Trading in KSA, Bahrain, Kuwait and Qatar, he is responsible for the PNL balance sheet, and general management of the business. So, sir, to begin with, could you provide a brief overview of your professional journey and your evolution from a sales and applications engineer to your current role as business unit head? Indeed, uh, Tanay. <laughs> to start with, uh, probably uh, nowhere in the past uh, I have tried to dwell over my journey and I think uh, this is an opportunity for me to reflect upon 25 years of my career uh, plus 25 years plus. So I started uh, my career in uh, some time as a teacher in life, uh, teaching students, but that has nothing to do with my engineering uh, background. But anyway, that's a past time when I, would do, when I was doing my part-time engineering. But uh, anyways, from there, my real career started when I entered as a 26 years lad in Gulf, nervous lad rather. So living for foreign shores, uh, trying to find work and living. And, uh, and then I started with, uh, with as a sales and application engineer with uh, uh, industrial solution sector. Uh, precisely, uh, it's uh, metal surface treatment and uh, hot melt uh, industrial adhesive applications. That was the field I'm active with. So, uh, everything is new uh, to start with. The geography is new, the culture is new, the people are new, the work is new, everything is uh, fresh. Of course, that brings a lot of enthusiasm as well as challenges. Uh, I took them and uh, I accepted. And uh, I fortunately, I had a good uh, mentor who hired me uh, those days. And um, I started to train and uh, I started to gain experience, confidence of my higher management also. And uh, indeed, uh, uh, it's a slow progress in the beginning because everything was new. But uh, when I started to understand things in a six months to one year span, my learning became very quick uh, further. And uh, then 
to deal with uh, here the advantage uh, being in gulf is to deal with uh, multiple nationalities starting from uh, probably i can say that i have worked uh, you point your finger anywhere on the globe and probably i know or at least have worked communicated with any one person from that geography that kind of uh, environment you will find here in this part of the world so that was an opportunity actually uh, and uh, it started it started it's running and uh, i started learning i, I trained uh, uh, in uh, our uh, principal offices in europe uh, many times for technical and commercial things and then further uh, year 2007 probably after the eight nine years of experience as sales and application engineer uh, the hair man management found me to be a uh, good fit for uh, leading the team of the country the whole country and uh, the business was in distress those days a little bit and uh, i i felt uh, challenged those days uh, because our team was not uh, really good enough some people left in the team expertise uh, left and uh, we have to bring and hon right kind of people right kind of mix to build the team so that was a challenge and uh, i took up to on that and further it was uh, since then uh, again uh, a continuous nine year stretch as country had and uh, every year we recorded we broke our records of past year turnover so yes. really that was that was a good time to be uh, in the leadership position of a sales and uh, technical team so further uh, year 2007 i took a little break for my family sake my family was living with me here I had uh, two sons and a daughter, and uh, for their education purpose, I have to relocate them to India because here in this part of the country, we cannot uh, go for a higher education, good higher education. So, therefore, I relocated. I took a break, small break uh, from my career, and I had to attend my personal uh, things also back in India. Further to that, uh, in 2019, I rejoined in the Gulf operations. Uh, uh, with a different group but same line of business uh, but uh, this time as a regional uh, manager for middle east the whole middle east okay so uh, it was again a new challenge new geography out of saudi and bahrain markets uh, i expanded into other uh, geographical areas mm. rest of the gcc and uh, adjacent to gcc areas so therefore that was a challenge uh, traveling too much traveling involved, uh, but uh, it was going good. But then everybody knows uh, the corona struck everywhere, year 2020. And that was a time uh, traveling is restricted globally. Uh, so therefore, uh, we have to work from home, mostly attend customers from home and uh, work continued like that. Uh, then uh, when travel traveling got easier, uh, I moved back. I relocated myself uh, into Gulf in uh, year 2021, last latter part of 21. Uh, there I I was uh, in the position of uh, business unit head uh, for Ocean World Trading. Again, this is a company uh, in industrial solutions and uh, of uh, powder coating and uh, hot belt uh, adhesive solutions. Mm -hmm. And uh, since then, I am in this position and uh, here, the challenge in uh, this position is I have to build everything from scratch in this company, from scratch, real scratch. So, two years now, uh, we are seeing some results, first results. So, I hope the journey will continue or yeah. I don't know where this will take me or World Directors Institute where this will take me. Let's see. Yes, sir. So that's in hindsight, uh, my two and a half years of uh, journey. Yeah. And I... sir, could you share a challenging situation you faced that you overcame with your leadership skills? Uh, Tanai, uh, there are many actually. Every day is a challenge uh, in work. And uh, if you go back uh, 
looking in my profile what was the most challenging i don't think so i can point out uh, to any one single challenge uh, that we overtook but probably i can um, uh, say that uh, when i became a country head uh, in year 2007 uh, uh, that was the most challenging assignment I ever had, uh, probably, because uh, that time uh, here, the business was in distress, uh, economy and business was in distress, that is one thing. And uh, most of the uh, technical guys uh, are team leaders here, they left the company. So that was a bigger challenge for me, uh, one on the business front, second on the team front, internal front. So we have to build a real good responsive team. And in industrial solution, what happens is giving customer personal touch, sitting across the table, attending his needs, listening to his requirements, and uh, making sure that uh, he feels comfortable that you are around and you can take everything about his production process if something goes wrong so that was the challenge actually and uh, and uh, you know always resources are scarce in any organization and my higher management will not uh, give me immediate resources like uh, hiring some manpower immediately we have to overcome we have to show some results uh, break some barriers in the business uh, show results to higher management uh, saying that, uh, yes, uh, we could do this and uh, then we need this. So step-by-step, step, incremental way. In a couple of years, I built a really good responsive team and uh, that took on again uh, further. So I think uh, that was the most challenging situation uh, I had to ever face, those two difficult years to build the team, to build the business. I think that was the greater challenge I made successful. Of course, uh, with the support of my higher management, but then uh, I think in hindsight, uh, I would say that's the challenge I met successfully. So what are some of the most important learnings of your professional life? Uh, I think I would say uh, convert challenges uh, into opportunities. Uh, don't get scared of uh, any challenge because uh, a customer can call you midnight. <laughs> because uh, and they say that uh, he has a problem with his uh, machine and uh, something needs to be done immediately for his production process because otherwise he will lose millions if he stops for a couple of hours. So uh, you never scare yourself, but uh, be prepared to meet those challenges. When I said converting challenges into opportunities, when you see a challenge learn try to gear up uh, prepare yourself uh, whether in my case suppose taking my field of uh, my domain experience we have to build some inventory in this part of the world this is not manufacturing country for example so mm. everything we have to get imported from west europe or usa or japan sometimes so therefore you need to have some inventory here, inventory of spare parts and machinery. But then uh, it has to be reasonable within the limits uh, of financial viability. So, and then a manpower to cater to the needs of the customer, right? So, therefore, you gear yourself, prepare yourself for uh, meet the challenges and convert those things into opportunities. So, that is one. And uh, the other important uh, learning in my career is uh, in business do not say or try to make customer feel that he's on wrong side of the business wrong side of the argument rather always listen to him maybe you know he's outrightly wrong his point of argument is not valid not reasonable but always listen to your customer if you listen him well, it will take steam out of him when he's in a frustrated position. So listen to him. Show patience. If you listen to him, 
I think 50% of your problem is solved. Then he will listen to you. You yeah. propose yeah. something. <laughs> if you propose something, uh, if you say something, he will listen to you. And the other thing is, build some domain expert. If you are doing some working in some field, try to understand nitty gritty of the domain. Only when you are aware of this, you can ably communicate with your business partners, with your customers, with your colleagues. Otherwise, it is uh, just uh, bragging and nobody really listens to. I think okay. these are the serious learnings. So how and when did you develop an interest in ESG and corporate governance? Mm, I would say from uh, 98 when I started in Gulf till 2007 when I had a continuous stretch of 18 years working day and night. Of course, everybody works. But uh, actually, I never reflected on my career and I was running, really. I was running, running, running those 18 years. And in 2017, when I had an opportunity to relocate my family and take a little break for my ways, I break for myself, I started to reflect what's mm. next, what I should do. So my family is going to stay in India for their studies and probably I don't know where my children will end up. So do I need to go back to Gulf or do I need to do something within India uh, to find some... Uh, work or on my own or I don't know. What should I do basically? So mm -hmm. those were the times I started to reflect on mm -hmm. alternatives. And uh, I was into many things uh, to speak to you. But uh, few, few, few of the fields I considered is uh, one is uh, a valuation profession and mm -hmm. uh, the other one is corporate governance. And the corporate governance and valuation because uh, because of the changing scenario, business scenario of our country. You see, uh, the business dynamics, structural changes are happening in Indian business, in Indian business. So, and I think this will leapfrog India into next global bigger economy in coming decades, in couple of decades. And uh, I think the industry and the business is gearing up to meet that challenge. And you have some opportunities for the people with domain experience in corporate governance there. So uh, that's the gap I think I found and I tried to fit in myself there. So this is the beginning point. That's the point uh, where I started to think seriously about these kind of uh, work. So as an ESG and corporate governance expert, what values do you bring to the table? So I think uh, communication within team is very important and respect. That's what I learned uh, working globally. So um, I should not say this, but... Uh, we found some gaps in Indian corporate governance or leadership positions. Uh, people do not share or respect others' works, others' uh, point of views. Uh, that's lacking actually. So therefore, uh, when you are working in teams, corporate governance is a teamwork, right? So therefore, uh, you have to listen to others, you have to communicate your point of view, and uh, you have to respect others' point of view. Not only listen, but respect others' point of view. This is the important value uh, we have to develop uh, in our scenario. Uh, I think that's the most uh, important thing. And then accountability. Um, that's uh, That we have to develop a lot, accountability. When you assign something to somebody, is accountable. When I when I'm given some task, I am accountable. In and out, fully I'm accountable. I don't throw responsibility on others, pass on responsibility to others. So accountability. Then delegation and division of work is also very important in leadership positions. 
don't try to assume everything uh, onto you. You delegate and divide the work and control it. I think uh, these are the important values for me as far as corporate and leadership governance is concerned. So what are some of the most remarkable changes you have seen in your field with respect to changes in technology? And what changes do you expect to see in the future with the advent of all these new technologies like IoT, AI, ML, blockchain, big data, etc.? Okay. So uh, many things happening uh, for uh, my generation for technology. It's uh, changing rather rapidly, uh, cruelly, I would say. For my generation, it's very it's very cruel, uh, this rapid change of technology to adapt, really. But you need to adapt. For, suppose, uh, when I started working, I was communicating through faxes. Right? And now, uh, if I need something, I just uh, send a WhatsApp. Of course, in between, there was a mail. Uh, now, mail is also gone, probably. Of course, it is still there, but for faster communication, you just send a send an WhatsApp and then you have an answer in seconds and uh, probably a fraction of seconds, right? So that's the rapid technology change I experienced in my field of work. And uh, with advent of all these new technologies you just mentioned, uh, we do not know really where the world is going to take us. Uh, it's, uh, but probably uh, it will take us to the good for the business yeah. because I see uh, in my domain experience at least uh, not generally speaking but uh, the machinery we supply and the industrial solutions we develop there is a lot of technology changes and the technology changes we adopted over last couple of decades helped customers to engage in better cost control and producing better goods and having better control over the processes, manufacturing processes. And this IoT and all these technologies help uh, in uh, such manufacturing process. And I'm sure the technologies, AI and ML and uh, blockchain, all these, all these definitely are going to help uh, to evolve in the business. And uh, of course, there will be challenges, uh, difficulties on the other side, but definitely they will uh, help uh, to ease of doing business and uh, facilitate uh, for good practices. So we're building a community here of industry magnets. The move is meant for cross-pollination of knowledge and building a knowledge-sharing community of corporate giants and industry experts. What are your thoughts about this initiative taken by Mr. Zishan Pathan, Mr. Hewal Mehta and the whole World Development Corporation team? Okay. Uh, when I first heard about uh, uh, your institute and the initiative by Mr. Zishan and Mr. Hewal, I thought uh, this is excellent <laughs> because uh, uh, this is what lacking. Uh, such yeah. a platform is lacking uh, in current scenario because uh, hitherto uh, Indian businesses, Indian industry, Indian corporates are mostly family controlled. Of course, everything starts uh, with one person and his family enters into business. That's not wrong to say. But corporate governance has to evolve a lot in India. Right? So it has to become more professional, uh, more uh, result-oriented, more accountable, more responsible. Further, you need, and the, uh, the way uh, the, our country is projected to grow uh, in coming decades, and probably we need real resources in corporate governance, expertise. You need expertise. Mm. And you have to bring that expertise, club together, and uh, find teams and people uh, who can really take this initiative further in Indian business. And uh, I think the initiative by World Directors Institute is excellent. And uh, this will uh, be a real good platform for people who wants to enter this line of career. Really. Excellent. Great, sir. It was fantastic, fantastic conversing with you and I'm confident that your insights will truly really inspire future leaders 
thank you so much for joining us today sir and wish you the best for your future endeavors moreover trust that this initiative by directors institute unquestionably has expanded the participants understanding and enriched their minds thank you so much sir thank you tanay for having this conversation with me and i hope uh, this will help others to take my learn from my experience and gain something out of it definitely sir have a great day ahead thank you you too thank you sir bye